Seamus Bruder is the author of two best-selling books, Fallout, Nuclear Bribes, Russian Spies, and Washington Lies. That could be the new name for the next James Bond film. And Compromised, How Money and Politics Drive FBI Corruption. Seamus is Associate Director of Research at the Government Accountability Institute, known as GAI. He has worked with Peter Schweitzer, New York Times bestselling author and president of GAI since 2011. Seamus has provided research and support for numerous New York Times bestsellers. Fallout, published earlier this year, exposes the Russia and the Ukraine scandals under the leadership of President Obama. It is a well-researched book that uncovers corruption, scandal, and the Washington lies that enriched the Clinton and Biden dynasties, and the desperate bid to impeach Donald Trump. Seamus is well-placed to provide commentary on the Hunter Biden emails that have been recently published. Seamus, welcome. Hi, Mike. It's great to be with you. Look, the um, just we spoke before, you must be getting some uh, interesting email with all the, uh, the work that you're doing at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been a it's been a whirlwind of a week uh, and or month and or year. <laughs> it's been pretty crazy, but we have been getting lots of emails, minor hate mail, but it's mostly actually people just coming out of the woodwork to uh, tell their story, tell their experience of dealing with Joe Biden. And uh, I, I must say, it's not good. There's uh, people who he's you know stiffed on business deals, mm-hmm. and there's people who they feel taken advantage of by his son Hunter. They feel thrown under the bus. So uh, it seems every every day uh, there's another email saying Joe Biden is a crook. Yep, pretty scary stuff. Uh, he may even be the next president. But what is scarier, though, if they get into this sort of um, holding pattern that Pelosi steps in on January the 20th, that's even scarier. But that's another, that's another Stephen King novel. <laughs> Look, you're the Associate Director of Research at the Government Accountability Institute, uh, known as GAI. Tell us about the Institute and how you came to be involved. Yeah, so uh, I'm in Tallahassee, Florida, in the States. I went to Florida State University. It's it's here in town. And uh, I thought I studied political science uh, and international affairs. I thought I might want to move to D.C. Uh, I studied Mandarin. I thought I might want to move to China. But I found this institute. Well, no, actually, I found Peter Schweitzer. It was before the institute was founded. Uh, it was 2011, and Peter had a book uh, called "Throw Them All Out." And so uh, my dad knew him and said, "Son, this would be a, a, a really uh, cool place for you to work. I think you'd love it." And so 2011. That's uh, we're almost coming up on 10 years working with Schweitzer, and he is really just an intrepid journalist, a brilliant, brilliant guy, brilliant mentor. He went to Oxford and he was a Stanford Hoover Institute fellow. Um, and so I've just learned so much and we just keep breaking these uh, these big stories and it's a, it's a rush. It gets bigger and bigger. What are some of the uh, important findings of GAI investigation so far? So, so the, that first book I mentioned, Throw Them All Out, appropriately titled, it refers to uh, members of Congress. Uh, we, we're a nonpartisan institute, so we do go after both sides, Republicans and Democrats, and anyone in between. And it, and it's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel. You just pick the uh, the five to ten worst offenders on both sides. So and throw them all out. We exposed a practice that we called congressional insider trading. And uh, many of your viewers may be familiar with the term insider trading. It would send you and I to prison if we engaged in insider trading. But what we found was really shocking. Congress members engaged in insider trading all the time. So they'd be sitting on the banking or the telecom committee. They'd be drafting legislation that would dramatically affect a publicly traded company. Uh, and they'd, they'd step out of the meeting and go call their stockbroker, say, uh, buy or sell Verizon. Um, and so it was a really shocking practice. And uh, we had some great success. Congress actually, surprisingly, passed a law called the Stop Trading on Congressional Knowledge Act, the Stock Act. And uh, so th- we, we consider that we just got actually uh, years later, our first scalp, uh, a, a, senator, a, a congressman up in New York was uh, convicted of insider trading under the Stock Act, trading on Congre- congressional knowledge. So that was that was the first big story I worked on with Schweitzer. There was a 60 Minutes piece on it. Steve Croft from 60 Minutes did a full, full, uh, full hour, I believe, 
Um, the next book I worked on for Schweitzer was called Extortion, um, also appropriately titled. As you'll see that's a theme here. Um, that This was where most people realize that politicians kind of um, solicit donate you know donations or your soft money um and and people know that businesses go to lobby and, and just flood washington dc with cash but we thought what if what if the reverse is actually true what if sometimes the government extorts businesses and and says pay up or else uh, we're going to regulate you out of business and we found all kinds of examples the uh i'm not sure if uh, your viewers in australia were familiar with sopa and pippa Mm. But uh, these these were the precursors to what is now known as net neutrality. We called the – there's these bills that uh, Schweitzer called milker bills where they're really not intended to pass. They're just intended to squeeze money out of people. And so that, that SOPA, PIPA, net neutrality really pitted uh, two major industries, Hollywood versus Silicon Valley. Hollywood wanted the intellectual property protections. They wanted to – stop the piracy that was the stop online piracy act is the sopa part of it and uh and then how and then T silicon valley wants autonomy and freedom you know you can't be looking into our uh customers uh, google drive account to see if they've got a pirated movie on there so anyway it raised unprecedented levels of cash it never passed mm. um and so we find examples like this all the time of bills that are just put into motion to get the industries to pay up um, and then, and, and most people kind of think of the government as a form of a toll booth, which uh, it really is. It, it just sucks cash from you every which way, taxes for this and taxes for that. So that was extortion. Uh, the next book was probably my favorite book. That was Schweitzer's uh, New York Times number one best-selling book, Clinton Cash. And that's where we really blew the lid wide open on the Clinton Foundation. We followed the money. We tracked down the speaking fees. We tracked down the uh, don Clinton Foundation donations, and we found some really shocking stuff. This is where we broke the Uranium One deal, um, which was how Russia uh, and some Canadian investors just poured million, tens of millions, $145 million into the Clinton Foundation from investors in this one deal um, that needed approval from the State Department to sell out 20% of the United States uranium domestic supply. So uh, Vladimir Putin ha now has a nice, uh, nice, substantial footprint, nuclear foothold here in the United States. And, and that, that deal, I mean, we can come back to that on the new book, Fallout, because I've really not been able to stop digging on that deal. And I think we finally have cracked it. Um, but the, the, Clinton, the Clinton cash book had a huge impact. It hit New York Times uh, list a full year after it came out because that was right up before the election. Um, and so that was that was exciting. And uh, then the one after that was called Secret Empires. That was Schweitzer's uh, next number one New York Times bestselling book. And in Secret Empires, we uh, it had a pretty big China focus. We uh, exposed some Chinese connections to uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. But the, the the really lasting impact of that book was this Biden China Bohai Harvest uh burisma the ukrainian gas company and in the story of hunter biden i didn't even know uh hunter biden's name before we started this book and now look at the two years later all of those deals have come fully unraveled um people people know that there's something rotten in denmark with the biden family and uh so, so that was 2018 that was the same year I published my first book and that was compromised and I, i'm sorry i'm taking you on such a such a long journey mm -hmm. here but Compromised was uh, is probably one of my favorite books I've worked on. Uh, I'm biased; it was my book, but it was on FBI corruption. I, I I got to the end of all of these projects with Schweitzer and wondered how on earth are people not in jail over this? I mean, this is obviously criminal conduct. They're taking clear. I mean, it's at the at a minimum conflict of interest. It actually looks a lot more like bribery, but uh, certainly conflicts of interest. Many abound, you know unending conflicts of interest and uh so i i, I followed I, I kept coming to the same conclusion after each project well the doj signed off on it in the in the case of uh hillary clinton they issued her a conflict of interest waiver now i don't know why you would ever give a politician a conflict of interest waiver certainly not the clintons but uh the the obama doj signed off on it and said oh no 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 the clinton foundation does fantastic work they're 
they're solving the HIV crisis, they're curing climate change. Um, so, so the Clinton Foundation certainly deserves to take in $25 million from Saudi Arabia while Hillary Clinton uh, signs off on their weapons transfers. Mm. Um, so so the, the, the FBI book, I, I, I followed all the top players, James Comey, Robert Mueller, uh, the lower level directors, um, Andrew McCabe, Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, um, and, and on and on and on. I mean, there's an, the unending bureaucracy. There's plenty, plenty of crooks to find. So, so that kind of blew the lid on the FBI scandal. And, and now I've been working with John Solomon, who's a, a renowned uh, investigative journalist, award-winning journalist from way back in the day. He was at the Associated Press, and he's worked at pretty much every outlet since then. Um, and so we, we broke some FBI scandals, and uh, we're still waiting on accountability there. But the most recent book that Peter did was called uh, Profiles in Corruption. It was his, his uh, publisher, by the way, just a funny aside, is uh, HarperCollins, and they, they published Profiles in Courage, John F. Kennedy's book. And it was actually the 50-year anniversary. They came up with the title. They said, wouldn't it be great if we did Profiles in Corruption? So uh, Peter, Peter did uh, Profiles in Corruption, and that, that actually fu- fully uh, – exposed the entire Democrat field of candidates. So Kamala Harris is uh, right up on, it's over my, uh, my shoulder there. Uh, she's, she's front and center. And just beyond her is Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, Cory Booker. Um, we, we, uh, a little inside baseball, we held a draft and said, who do we think is going to be the leader of the progressive movement in the United States in 18 months? Who do we think is going to be the leader of the Democrat Party? And we did like a like a football draft uh, for fantasy or something. And uh, Peter Schweitzer is a very smart guy. He picked Kamala, mm-hmm. and uh, he 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 nailed it. Um, and Joe Biden, we we show way more money from China, much more money from Ukraine, uh, flowing into the Biden family pockets. We've got five separate members of the Biden family who are all on the take, and they're all cashing in on the Biden family name. Um, they're getting contracts. Here's the here's the here's the kicker: is every single place that Obama put uh, Biden in charge of the foreign policy, he first did it in Iraq in 2009. Joe Biden's brother James Biden gets contracts. Never he's never built housing in the states, let alone in a a, a war zone or a war torn zone. Um, and he gets this, uh, you know, almost I think it's a billion dollar contract. This company that doesn't have any experience in building. Uh, developments in in countries uh, across the world. So he gets a billion dollar contract. Hunter Biden uh, is famously cashing in in Ukraine as Joe Biden is the point man um, during the uh, the Ukraine crisis, the Maidan revolution time period. Yeah. And uh, on and on and on. The daughter, the sister, the brothers. They're they're all they're all cashing in, and it's millions of dollars. It's a, it really puts even the Clintons to shame in some of these deals. And then that brings me to the final book, Fallout, uh, and that was co-authored by John Solomon, the, the award-winning journalist I mentioned. And and we in Fallout, and and I'll I'll finish here and let you get to your next question. But uh, Fallout, we show the connection from the Clinton disastrous foreign policy um, and the State Department to the Kerry for, foreign policy, and really where how Joe Biden sits in the middle of all of these disastrous U.S. foreign policy initiatives. What about the, uh, the, the, actual, the actual fallout now from the book? Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, you're not going to be on anybody's Christmas card list this year. Um, Thanksgiving, you know, enjoy it at home by yourself. No, I've made, it's, I've it's, made a lot more friends like you, Mike, who, uh, who are much better. Uh, I'd, rather be, uh, I'd rather be friends with uh, journalists who like to get to the bottom of things and expose the truth. It's an exciting book. Um, the evidence before you. Uh, how did you get that? What sort of uh, headaches did you walk into or walls, not Donald Trump's big wall, but just walls from the other side did you walk into? It, each project builds on itself, which is, mm. I would say, one of our, our advantages is we've got so much institutional knowledge here and, and so many, I mean, it's a pretty small organization, only about 10 or so researchers here. Um, but everybody becomes kind of an expert in something and they carry that on to the next project um, and so the DOJ was one. Th- it was one of the things that I carried on from the FBI book, and also the Clinton cash book. Uh, this uranium one deal just didn't sit right with me, especially uh, in light of the the entire RussiaGate scandal that was 
completely man- manufactured out of whole cloth uh, accusing Donald Trump of colluding with Russia. It just struck mm-hmm. me as odd. I was like, wait a second. It was the Obama administration who had the Russia reset where she pushed this cheap button, this red button uh, in Switzerland with Foreign Minister Lavrov uh, from Russia. You know, they, they had this cute little uh, it was a, it was a total gimmick. It, it flopped because she mistranslated the word. But uh, they pushed the reset button. And from there, right at that moment, it was March 2009. It was one giveaway to Putin after another. We canceled missile defense. The United States, Obama, I don't want to say we because we didn't have anything to do with it. Obama canceled missile defense in Poland. We left the Poles in the Czech, in the Czech uh, off, like we hung them out to dry. They were looking forward to having this missile defense system to protect them against Iran, uh, against Russia, China, North Korea. We were going to install these, uh, these missile silos. Well, um, canceled. And that was, that was the first thing Putin wanted them to do. Uh, then we give these toothless new start treaties, which Putin violates with impunity. They're, they have no real consequences if you violate the nuclear treaties um, with the United States. And, and it really puts the United States at a disadvantage because we abide by the treaty. Um, so there were several tr- t- treaties that basically they gutted some of the provisions that would have held, held Russia's feet to the fire. Um, and uh, let's see, the Uranium One deal, as I mentioned, I mean, that was just a massive giveaway. It was shocking. Hundred plus million dollars going into the foundation of the Secretary of State. I mean, that is, it's just an outright bribe. Mm-hmm. It looks mm-hmm. like it looks like, um, and the and the speaking fees. Uh, Bill Clinton in Russia in Moscow taking five hundred thousand dollars for what thirty minutes of his time. Uh, it's an outrage, and so that that all outraged me so much I couldn't believe it. And then when this Donald Trump Russia collusion story came out, I thought to myself, this seems like projection. It seems like a classic left leftist move. You accuse the enemy of that which you are guilty. And uh, so that's what fallout really does is it follows the story from the failed Obama-Russia policy, Obama-Biden. Because Obama uh, Biden was the one who called it the reset first in February 2009. we got to have a reset with Russia. So we followed that and then all the way to 2013. So by 2013, Putin has fully had his way with the United States, gotten all he wants. And then he uh, is, you know, kind of building up forces on the border we go into uh, you know Ukraine and foment revolu- revolutions. We've got Victoria Newland was uh, at the State Department. She was on the ground in Kiev, um, you know, helping these these uh, radical protesters oust the uh, Yanukovych government and install a government much more friendly to the United States, Poroshenko. And that's exactly who Biden is making deals with. That's who he's saying I'm going to withhold the billion dollars if you don't mm-hmm. fire the prosecutor that's investigating my son Hunter. Well, right along with Joe Biden going to Ukraine is Hunter, doesn't speak Ukrainian, zero experience in oil and gas, and then ends up on the board of one of the largest company, gas companies, oil and gas companies. They're a very green uh, family, as you can tell. Mm. Uh, oil and gas companies in Ukraine, a totally corrupt entity, according to multiple comp- uh, countries. The UK was looking into the, the CEOs, Lachevsky, the founder. Um, uh, for money laundering, among other things, for stealing state assets, uh, you know, kind of plundering the uh, the oil field. So um, I, I just I looked at it, I was like, this stinks to high heaven. And then so we tied it all in with the FBI's spygate uh, mm. and how they were complicit in all of these schemes. I mean, Robert Mueller was, uh, you know, he transported highly enriched uranium to Russia after it was stolen from a lab in Russia and smuggled into Georgia. Why did we give that back? It was, uh, it's, you know, easy to make a dirt, not easy, but uh, it could, you know, once it's out of the lab and missing, you know, it could become a dirty bomb. Why would you give it back if they don't, can't even keep a hold on it? Mm-hmm. Um, James Comey, he's, he's, he's right up in the thick of all of this. I mean, if you wonder how people get away with it, it's men like James Comey and Robert Mueller have been running the FBI for 30 years almost. Uh, I almost th- over three years. So anyway, that's that's uh, you know plenty on that, and I'm happy to answer any questions that might have arisen. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking the um, Joe Biden is sort of on the fence with the Green New Deal. I'm just wondering whether his Green New Deal it's a different. Well, it's green, but it's more paper. So maybe he's just looking for more green on New Deals. Oh, who knows? <laughs> that's funny. I hadn't even. Hadn't even thought of it, 
but absolutely it's a, it's a, it's a huge boondoggle. Mm. Uh, it's, you know, $4 trillion or $2 trillion. I mean, it's just truly, you know, when, when the numbers start getting up into the two and four trillions of dollars, just suffice it to say, it's, it's a scam, mm. you know, there's no, no, no plan should be just aim to cost $2 trillion. Nobody can fathom how much money that is. So it's what the entire is what the United States spends on every single thing in the country in a uh, half of a year. Um, and this is just towards the energy. I don't, I don't see a point to it. I think uh, Joe Biden is pandering to the far left, the AOC mm -hmm. crowd. Um, you know, he said he, go, he goes back and forth on whether he's going to allow fracking or not. He's just trying to speak out of both sides of his mouth. He's, I mean, ultimately, he is bought and paid for by Wall Street. Um, he, you know, you look at the donations uh, to the candidates. Donald Trump's uh, one fifth of Joe Biden's donations from Wall Street. Wall Street, uh, for whatever reason, uh, loves Biden, and uh, that's actually where Hunter Biden got his start. Was working for a big, big bank in Delaware. That was the first job mm. that uh, Joe hooked him up with. So, uh, the, I think the Green New deal is just kind of a pie in the sky uh, idea and uh, a way to funnel millions, billions, mm. and I guess trillions into your donors' pockets. That's the green. Um, your book that is covers, the green. Your book covers Joe Biden's propensity and skills in deal making uh, during his time as vice president under a pretty average president. Uh, do any of his actions warrant investigation? And as a sidebar to that, uh, looking at the FBI and the uh, lack of confidence that you know there is at the moment within the FBI, um, would this investigation lead anywhere? So one, do we have an investigation? Does it warrant one? And two, will the result be fair and true? It's a really good question. I think it's a, I think it's a question everyone is wondering uh, here in the states, or at least uh, those those who consider the behavior of previous administrations to be corrupt. And uh, I do. And, and Peter Schweitzer, uh, in his books, I mean, he's done two books now on Joe Biden. And he has said, I have been looking into politicians for 30 years following the money. Um, you know, gone are the days where a politician, you know, gets found with a freezer full of cash. That's just that's not how it happens anymore. It's private equity deals. It's shell corporations. It's, uh, you know, offshore accounts. And that is exactly what Biden, Hunter Biden, is up to his eyeballs in. I mean, I have now been going through some of these non-public emails of one of his business partners. I can't keep track of the number of prospectuses and investor pitches for, I mean, effectively numbered numbered account companies. I mean, it's a Hudson West number four and, uh, you know, venture number three. And it's, you know, it's almost comical at this point. I mean, I've probably counted 50 different entities and I'm trying to wrap my head mm. around like, what is this being used for? What is it producing? The answer is nothing. It's producing an avenue for oligarchs like uh, Lena Baterina, the, uh, the widow of the former mayor of Moscow, very close to Putin, a total scoundrel herself, uh, stole billions, uh, I mean, most of her money, in fact, uh, from the, the people of Russia. Uh, this has been, you know, she was under investigation numerous times. She always slipped through... Uh, the fingers. And at a, at a certain point, she was trying to get that money out of Russia. Who does she go to? Hunter Biden. Now, why on earth would you choose Hunter Biden other than the fact that he's the son of the vice president? He's untouchable. Clearly, he's untouchable because all of his business associates are in jail and he is not. Look, we had a um, in uh, when Trump was running for his first term, uh, I recall, and I think it was one of the great lines and it will probably go down forever as one of the, those great lines, Crooked Hillary. Um, now he calls the Biden family a criminal organization. What do you think he may have been referring to? Well, I think he's been, he's been advised by Rudy Giuliani, Mayor Rudy, uh, New York mayor, who, who uh, by the way, is, could, it, be, could be a <laughs> Russian spy. Now that's, pr I mean, oh, yeah. that's pretty wild. Every, every, everyone, uh, everyone the Democrats don't like is a Russian spy. So just, just be careful. Uh, mm. you, you might be a Russian spy before you know it. Vladimir is my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I think uh, he's working with Rudy. Rudy is famous for busting up the five crime families of New York. Mm -hmm. He really revolutionized the use of uh, the prosecutorial tool known as RICO, Racketeer Influenced Corrupt Organizations. It, it, you know, it's, it's when there's just constant 
crime being used to run a, a, a criminal enterprise. And so I think that's what Trump is kind of uh, alluding to is the Biden family is run like a criminal organization. They don't produce anything. They produce Joe Biden's power, like pow Joe Biden's power produces cash for his brother, his sister, his son, and his daughter. Uh, everyone around Joe Biden, I mean, his daughter's going to the White House and uh, getting her new company, uh, you know, launched doesn't make anything uh, as far, you know, it, you and I, I mean, if you, if you started a company tomorrow and you went to the White House and you got a kind of like a PR event at the White House, I mean, you could be a giant company overnight with such publicity. So um, it's these favors from Joe Biden that really bring in the cash to the, the family members. And uh, many people have called him the most corrupt vice president, and he would surely be the most corrupt president. Um, uh, at least since Obama. Do you have a view on the FBI's position on its receipt of the Hunter Biden laptop? Now, this sort of makes the news globally right now. What's coming out next, uh, especially if you watch uh, Fox, uh, if you watch NBC, CBS, blah, 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 you may not see much of it, but the timing of the receipt and if any of the material could have shed light on the impeachment bid. Yeah, well, for, to the, the first part of your question, I think it's a very simple answer. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, I wasn't, you know, I don't know the provenance of it. it the, the, you know, there's, it is kind of a peculiar story. Um, I, I, I mean, I guess Hunter Biden could be uh, just silly enough to leave his laptop yes. at the repair shop. I yes. guess I've forgotten, I've forgotten things before. So that, but it's a very, it's actually a much simpler question is why haven't the Bidens denied it? And now That's they've it. had a week. They've had at least a solid week. And if it weren't Hunter Biden's laptop, then they would have denied it. And in fact, there's more evidence proving that it is Hunter Biden's laptop than there is that it isn't. Mm. Uh, another piece of evidence that it is Hunter Biden's laptop. Someone from the Biden campaign asked for it back. So if it's not his laptop, why would they ask for it back? Mm. Uh, it makes no sense. So it, it appears that it is Hunter Biden's laptop. That's how uh, many are treating it. I, I have no reason. In fact, I have reason to believe it is at least authentic, uh, the files are authentic, um, because we've been granted access to the Gmail account. We were given, now this is not a hard drive, this is not a hack, this is not a leak. This is, we were given the, the name, the username and password by one of Hunter Biden's business partners who's currently incarcerated in a scheme that Hunter Biden was allegedly involved in, uh, and he feels like he was thrown under the bus um, and while his, you know, while Hunter Biden and uh, Devin Archer, the other business partner, got off scot free, mm. so he gives us his credentials, um, and now we have a treasure trove of, like I said, I mean, there's just thousands and thousands of emails, and there's all these entities, and it's, I mean, I kind of wish he had given it to us a little sooner. Mm. Uh, I haven't been getting much sleep lately, but I have been going through them systematically. He, you know, he authorized in writing, but he does not want us to leak his laptop to the press. I mean, most people's email, I mean, it's, it's filled with personal stuff. It's a, you know, the, the only incentive this guy has to do this is he wants truth and justice yep. because he's letting a complete stranger, i.e. me, Schweitzer, uh, another colleague uh, named Matthew Tiermond who, to go through his personal life. And it, 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 it really is a tragedy what happened to him. I mean, he got, he got caught up in the wrong crowd. I'm sure, uh, you know, he's in jail for a reason. So he certainly, uh, did something wrong. But uh, he thought maybe he was protected like Hunter Biden, and he was sorely mistaken. Um, but yeah, these these emails corroborate the New York Post emails, mm -hmm. the the Hunter Biden laptop. Mm -hmm. uh, just I'll give you a quick example. Uh, one of the first little nuggets that the New York Post dropped from the Hunter Biden laptop was uh, an email from a Burisma executive named P Vadim Pojarski. Uh, he he contacts Hunter and says, "Hunter, so good to see you. Thank you so much." for introducing me to your dad. Now that completely contradicts what Joe Biden has been saying. He's been saying he never talked about his business with his son. He didn't even know his son was doing business. Like he just is completely oblivious, I guess, to his own child's uh, life. Mm. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know how he figures that his son ends up in a two and a half million dollar mansion in LA, Los Angeles. Um, but that just completely debunks it. So what do our emails do? Our emails, uh, show that Vadim Pojarski certainly does email Hunter Biden and Hunter Biden's associates frequently, um, giving them 
uh, you know, instructions on what to do about the Burisma deals. And, he, you know, he mentions Mikola Zlachevsky, who is the major sticking point. I mean, the, the reason that uh, Hunter Biden was hired ostensibly was to bring some form of credibility to this otherwise seemingly very corrupt company. And Zlachevsky is the oligarch at the center of it. He was under investigation in numerous countries. His assets were frozen by the UK. His UK, his assets in the UK were frozen. Um, and so what do they do? They hire Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden joins the board, no experience again in oil and gas, no Ukrainian language. So he's got to travel with a translator. It's like, what are you doing, Hunter? Well, the answer becomes clear. And who reveals it? Joe Biden himself. He says, I'm not going to give you the billion dollars unless you fire this prosecutor. It's an extremely odd move. Mm. Whether or not the prosecutor deserved to be fired, why on earth is that? I mean, have you ever seen? I have never seen the vice president of the United States going into a small, relatively small country like Ukraine and demanding they fire their prosecutor. I mean, it's like a I mean, it's not a low level position, but it's certainly not, uh, you know, the secretary of state or the foreign minister or what have you. So it, it's a really bizarre activity. And it, and it just goes to the heart of like, what were these people paying Hunter Biden for? Joe Biden. It was it, this isn't a Hunter Biden scandal. None of this is a Hunter Biden scandal. This is a Joe Biden scandal. Mm. Look, the, I, I've got to say, as I put my glasses on, so this is the first time uh, the Epoch Times um, uh, Joe Biden says there's no basis for allegations that his son, Hunter Biden, profited from arranging access to his father while he served as vice president. And then he says the vast majority of the intelligence people have come out and said there's no basis as, at all. And uh, is this a uh, resurgence of Clapper and Brennan? Because the director of national intelligence, John Ratcliffe, told Fox uh, on October 19, there's no evidence tying the case of the Hunter Biden laptop to Russian disinformation. So is this just another bit of fluff, bit of crap flow, it's comedy. thrown in the air? I mean, it's, I mean, it's comedy. It's, it is. is. That, it's, it's comedy. It's, it's, I mean, I, it, from right from Joe Biden saying that there's no basis. I mean, that's just ludicrous. I mm. mean, you, you can see, uh, I mean, even the left wing press when, you know, in years past has reported on this. It's absolutely unseemly at best and corrupt out, you know, mm. at worst, uh, very corrupt. Mm. And so, so that's the, that's the first part of the comedy is Joe Biden expecting us to believe that he, there's like just zero basis for wanting to know why the Chinese government gives his son a $1.5 billion private equity deal, zero experience in private equity. Mm. And all of a sudden out of nowhere, they, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden fly to China, 10 days later after in, in, in Hunter comes with the vice president on Air Force Two, that's unusual. Mm. The, the vice president is usually not in the habit of just having tag alongs, whether it's your son or not. Certainly not if your son is a, uh, you know, tragically, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to disparage Hunter for his, uh, his addiction. But I mean, it's a risk. It's a national security risk to bring him into a place where he could be compromised. He could be brought into a, a brothel, which he apparently was, according to the Senate report by uh Senator Ron Johnson, he was spending all kinds of money on prostitutes and on uh, on drugs. So it's not so much about the the the, the, the lifestyle problem. And, and, you know, our heart goes out to anybody suffering with such mm. things. But it's more about the national security side of it and how, you know, the Biden family could be compromised through the son. And obviously they were compromised because he took one point five billion dollars. Goldman Sachs doesn't get that deal. Morgan Stanley doesn't get get that deal. JP Morgan doesn't get that deal. Hunter Biden gets that deal. Mm. It's it just is completely absurd. The second part of the comedy here is that people like Clapper and Brennan think that they deserve any credibility at I mean their credibility is gone. Mm. After the Russia scandal, they completely manufactured the entire thing. Mm. Uh, they 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 planted uh, they planted like sources, uh, spies. They literally spy I mean Trump was laughed at when he said they spied on my campaign. They did spy on his campaign. They put spies within his campaign. And, and even worse than a human, like human, human intelligence spy is the FISA. The FISA is, it's everyone. It's mm. not, you, you get a FISA warrant on Carter Page. It's not just Carter Page. It's, they call it two hop. This was in the compromised FBI book. You get a two hop, uh, jump from Carter Page to Carter Page's mom and anyone Carter Page's mom was talking to. 
Mm. Carter Page to Carter Page's, you know, high school friend and anyone Carter Page's high school friend is talking to. And it's not just a wiretap. It is everything, all data, internet mm. traffic, text mm. messages, emails, uh, Skype calls. I mean, it's, 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 it's the most intrusive surveillance that there's ever been. And uh, apparently James Clapper and, and James Comey and John Brennan can just weaponize it to take out their political opponents. So, and when Joe Biden says it's the majority of the, mm. uh, I mean, the vast, he's, I think he says the vast majority, mm. it's, it's ludicrous. It's 50 people is not the vast majority. And when you've got people like James Clapper and John Brennan on the list, uh, you know, you're hurting your case. Just for the, uh, the fact by saying it was uh, suspicious of Russian involvement. I mean, if they really want to find the Russians, I mean, just go to um, uh, Hillary's next birthday and see what birthday cards are there. And if you if yep. there's if there's a bit of paper there with a couple of zeros next to it, I mean, yeah, as as a gift, of course, it's uh, pretty it's, wild. It's, it's absolutely right. Mm. But uh, I, I have to say, fall, though, in Fallout, there's so many Russians tied to the Democrats. There's yep, a Ru- dozen plus mm. tied to Biden, Hillary, all of them. The other thing, the FBI. I mean, the FBI was up there with the Pope, or the Vatican. Although the Vatican's a bit uh, dirty at the moment, but the it was it was. Pure, whiter than white, and the FBI. What's what's wrong with them? What what can be done to make them better? <laughs> Sorry, uh, and, we, well, and we only I, have three weeks to do this. All right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right. I right. Right. No, it's it's funny. Uh, sitting right here, I've got a uh, a picture of, uh, and it's a J. Edgar Hoover thing. Mm-hmm. J, it, the FBI's always been corrupt. Mm-hmm. It was founded in corruption. It was founded by J. Edgar Hoover. In 1920, he kept his index cards on people. He kept his files on people, his enemy lists. Mm. He spied on civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King. The FBI tried to pressure Martin Luther King to commit suicide shortly before he was assassinated mm. by trying to manufacture or or maybe produce photos of him being unfaithful to his wife. This is standard operating procedure is to uh, just attack anyone who is an enemy mm. of the establishment. But the, and but so the, you I'm just sorry for cutting in, but the American people, yes, no. the American people, they love the F, uh, they, the, the FBI is God, the, you know, along with, uh, because yeah, that's just the general American people. Yes, the FBI, you go, you're local. They're the good guys. They're, they're the, the good, good guys in not. the blue suit. They're not. Well, good. right. Well, it's the 1%, and I think you see it, And it's not just the FBI, Mm. it's everything. Mm. It is the State Department, Mm. it is the CIA, it is the NSA, it's the Treasury, it's the Federal Reserve. It's the seventh floor, we call it. They call it the seventh floor. Uh, Some places call it the shadow government. And uh, the FBI is just particularly, you know, the the rank and file agents. And, and and, you know, I do wonder, like, where are the whistleblowers? but but typically, I mean, I know FBI agents like they're hardworking. They want to mm. do the right thing. Mm. Usually, a case doesn't involve uh, you know political motives like the 2016 election did. So uh, you know, I, I I go back and forth. I, I wonder where the whistleblowers are from these rank and file FBI agents who who we do you know we love the good guys in the blue suits who take out the bad guys. I mean, mm. it's a it's a good it's a good story and it makes for great television. But in practice, there are a lot of bad guys and there don't seem to be enough good guys. The uh, Donald, I mean, uh, it sends out a lot of tweets. Maybe you could send out a tweet to a plumber because the drain seems to be blocked. He, he hasn't yet drained the swamp. Well, the, the swamp is very deep and very wide. And I think it's much deeper and much wider than Donald Trump imagined. But I will say he is draining the swamp uh, every day. A new person is in the media, by the way, is a huge part of that swamp. And I would say that one of the greatest things Donald Trump has done is he has exposed the media for the total frauds that they are. Mm. They, they like to hold themselves up like they are just, you know, uh, you know, above reproach and, oh, we are journalists. No, you're not journalists. You are activists. Mm. And Donald Trump has exposed that. So they're, they're part of the swamp. But I wrote an article uh, after my FBI compromise book of uh, 25 members of the FBI and DOJ who have either been fired or resigned in disgrace. And I mean, at the top of the list, you've got James Comey, Andrew McCabe, Peter Strzok. These are career uh, FBI uh, operatives. Uh, Lisa Page, uh, Bruce Orr, he was the guy who was, uh, his wife Nellie Orr was working for Fusion GPS 
providing the fake intel reports on people like Carter Page. Nellie Orr was on the payroll of effectively the Clinton campaign, and then she was bringing her reports home and giving them to her husband, who would walk walk them in the back door into the DOJ. Mm. It was an outrage how long Bruce Orr remained at the Department of Justice. He just last week was fired. So you see these career operatives. They don't have a job, and their credibility is done. I would mm. love to see James Comey uh, you know, perp walked and Andrew McCabe. I mean, there's been criminal referrals, lying, leaking, you know, share, distributing classified information to your buddies in the media. Mm. Those are all crimes. They would, they would send me to jail if I did something like that. Um, so the criminal referrals are there. Um, and, and I would love to see some arrests made. I think everybody would love to see some arrests made. But we can rest assured in the fact that they will never have credibility again. They will never, unless Joe Biden wins, get their hands on the levers of power at the FBI and DOJ. Mm. Um, so that is, that is one thing to be alarmed about. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Joe Biden put James Comey right back in charge of the FBI. Yeah, that, that'll happen undoubtedly. I mean, it's the, um, it'll go back to the status quo. Don't, don't disturb the status quo. Really, uh, really scary. Uh, it's very upsetting. Uh, uh, just love the states. The, the, the West looks at the US to, uh, for inspiration and leadership. And at the moment, that's lacking. Uh, not Donald Trump's fault. I think the the the, uh, the crap that's been thrown out there at the moment, Antifa, the riots, the Democrats, COVID. I mean, wouldn't you like not to be president at the moment? It's 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 unbelievable. Um, I, I mentioned before the show started taping, I wasn't convinced that Donald Trump was a serious candidate initially, mm. but now now I I, I couldn't be mm. more convinced that, he, that I mean he was uh, sent at the right time. Uh, there's only one. I, I don't. I don't think anybody could handle the level of abuse that this man takes on a daily basis, and and most of it's just completely undeserved. I mean, some of it's fair, um, but at this point, it's it. You know, it's it's just so gratuitous, and there's never, you know, a compliment or a you know, uh, giving him credit for something good that he's done. Mm. And uh, it, it, it's 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 kind of shocking. It's a scary time. I certainly wouldn't want to be the president of the United States. Um, and, and that's for, for a 73 year old man who just survived COVID, he seems like he's never been more energetic. Seamus, somebody wants to, uh, read fallout. How would they do that? Yeah. So you could go to, uh, uh, www.thefalloutbook.com. Uh, it's on, it's on Amazon and, uh, Barnes and Noble and, you know, we, I'm, mm-hmm. Not sure if we have the same booksellers. We I, do. I should have known, but I, I haven't been to Australia, so I, I, I look forward to a trip. Well, if Biden gets in, we are accepting political refugees. <laughs> that, I, that's a, I, I might take you up on that. <laughs> well, I've told some friends that we have this really big front lawn and back lawn, plenty of tents. We have a barbecue each night, a few whiskeys. What more do you want? <laughs> oh, it, it, it sounds like heaven. Uh, uh, I'd love to. Uh, I, I do have a uh, plan on taking a trip there soon, so I'll, I'll have to look you up. Yeah, uh, uh, just don't drink for about three weeks beforehand because that liver will be given a really good going over. Seamus, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. It was, it was a pleasure. Thank you.